When I think about my specialism, I think about keeping doors open. And that is very useful for somebody like me who loves knowledge and loves designing solutions, but was slow to close doors down in terms of the directions I wanted to take. So when I was in school, I realised that I responded well to subjects like geography and chemistry. But I was also doing subjects like physics and maths, and I saw that there was a kind of an Esperanto there, that in studying problems through mathematics and through modelling, really they were generating solutions that were relevant in areas like geography and chemistry. And I was beginning to see that in school. So I said, right, I want to feel impact, I want to find solutions in the world. So engineering loomed large there. In university, I took a subject called signal processing, which remains my area of specialism now. And it involved essentially writing code, which involved very simple operations, adding, multiplying, storing numbers. Little changes in the numbers meant that I could turn this this gizmo into something that could cancel mains hum on a speech signal, but also was useful in coming up with a good prediction for how signals like speech might behave in the future, and all that that means for coding and compression. And I just thought, wow, there's a world of this stuff that I would, that I would love to do, and that led to opportunities to work on those kinds of signals in astronomy and medicine and in environmental monitoring. It's seeing for myself that some of those fundamental principles, down to ads and mults, could actually uh, get a lot of stuff done. I'm very interested in medical applications of signal processing. We've been privileged to be able to work with uh, patients undergoing thyroid cancer interventions, radiotherapeutic drug interventions, and using mathematical modeling to be able to build optimized, trained models for how members of such a population uptake these drugs and ultimately clear them from their system. It's very important in designing the drug intervention and in predicting their, their long-term outcomes. Those sorts of canonical modelling methods can be applied in what might appear quite different contexts. So a recent paper we've published as well has looked at the distribution of dangerous particulate matter suspended in air masses over India. In recent years, I was called on by the university to lead the drafting of a strategy that would inform how engineering interacts with environmental sciences, natural sciences, computer sciences, to guide the types of programs that we will deliver to students that will make them fit for the 21st century. It was called the E3 strategy. I wrote, I named that strategy, and I'm proud of that. It's about the big ticket issues of the 21st century, climate change, sustainability, the sensorization of our world and it's about how engineers are going to be at the heart of designing solutions that matter at that global level. That's, I suppose, the, the impulse, that curiosity to look through more than one door uh, that got me uh, into electronic engineering and has kept me there.